All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, happy Friday to you all. Uh, another weekend is coming up, even though it's COVID times, we're hopefully going to get some time off and, uh, and relax a little bit. Uh, just for everyone's information, I will be on vacation next week and not hoping to do any work. So I am actually not doing a tech talk next week. But uh, we will be back the following week with uh, Heath, who you met, I believe, last week or the week before. And he will be talking about sales funnels. So we'll, we'll talk about how that relates to our businesses and what we can kind of learn from there and take away into our own businesses and you know, potentially even talk with him to help, uh, help us set some up, things like that. So welcome to the small business tech talks that we do every Friday here. The idea of this group is to basically tell, uh, tell us, the small business owners in the group and anyone else that's interested in looking at these replays later on, uh, to understand about different technologies that you can use as a small business owner, uh, potentially in marketing and websites, um, other ways to grow your small business. And so that's really what our focus is. We will usually do a 10 minute or so conversation introduction at the beginning with a topic and then afterwards we'll move into uh, a sort of a Q&A and talk between um, uh, us and see how we can apply that, that tool that we talked about within our business to, um, to grow again, obviously. <clears throat> we do record these sessions and it will be available on YouTube and on my website. If you have any topics that you would like to discuss or want to present yourself, I would love it. Uh, I, I prefer me not talking all the time. So um, any, any ideas that you have that you use in your, in your business in terms of any tools and things like that would be perfect for us to talk about. So the, the last thing is if you know other business owners that would benefit from being here and listening into these conversations, we would certainly love to have them here and, uh, and uh, chat about what they are interested in, things like that. So let's get started. Today, oh, just so you know, our presentation from today was actually supposed to be on Kelsey. Um, I mean, with Kelsey, but uh, she had a, a scheduling conflict. It was actually partially my fault uh, because I forgot to follow up with her. So I, we will reschedule it soon. I believe in the next couple of weeks or in the beginning of September, we'll, we'll reschedule that. So that is not a problem. So anyone looking forward to that one, it will be coming up soon. Alrighty, so let's share my screen. Today's topic, I decided to <clears throat> talk about a very important part that a lot of us uh, often miss is on making sure our images are optimized so our websites are faster. You won't believe how many times I'll go onto websites and it takes me forever to load that website or see it. And then uh, I see that this image is enormous it's huge you know and it takes forever to load it uh, obviously because if i'm especially on a mobile device obviously so uh, what we need to do is make sure we understand what the size of the, uh, an image needs to be on our website and upload that specific size and also on top of it uh, we optimize it. and there are different ways to to do that that optimization step is called compression if anyone wants to sort of understand the technicalities of it so obviously it is important if it takes longer for your websites to load so we want to make sure by the way can anyone see my screen everyone see my screen okay yeah perfect so what we want to do is make sure our website is obviously speeding up so people our customers can or end prospects which is obviously more important so are getting to our website in a fast manner their way that they can see everything not get frustrated and leave the site right away so it'll create a better experience for your users. And what a lot of people don't know about is that uh, the speed of your website is actually affected in terms of SEO and page speed, which is a Google performance um, score that you get for SEO. So basically what happens is, let's say that you optimize your images, your website becomes, let's say from you know, seven seconds or eight seconds or five seconds, or whatever it is, to two to three seconds, to Google, that's great because what'll happen is Google say, okay, that your website is loading fast. And then you know we can send more people to your way, and they will experience. Uh, they'll have a better experience. We talked about SEO in the past in this group, and so basically the idea is kind of similar and related. That when more people are sent to your website from Google or other uh, search engines, obviously, 
and they stay longer on your website, let's say that they spend two minutes, five minutes, eight minutes, you know, that to Google is a good thing. Because what Google is saying, thinking is basically, oh, okay, so more people are going to this website. That means that if I send more people to this website, it benefits those people. Therefore, those people will come back to my search engine, i.e. Google, and, uh, and do more searches and whatever. Obviously, everyone's going to go to Google <laughs> uh, nowadays, but uh, that, that's sort of the mentality of how it works. There are a lot of other areas of SEO that we're not going to get into, obviously, but optimization of images is a very important one in this, in this um, uh, manners. That's why we want to talk about it. Uh, and so any question on why optimization matters? Perfect. So the, there are several different ways and several different things that we need to be aware of when we're talking about the optimization. The, the first thing we need to figure out is, well, how are my images, right? So if, uh, my images are really big, then we need to first make it smaller. And there are different sizes that you can create um, to, to have on your website. So the, the first thing would be, how are you taking your pictures? Or let's say you get a professional photographer. If, they, if you're taking a picture with a phone, even a phone these days will take a photo that will be like two to three megabytes, probably at least, uh, if not a lot bigger. And so if your website is trying to load a two, three megabyte uh, image, it's not good, obviously. So what you need to do is resize it, first of all. Resizing it will make sure that these, the size of the, the, the image is aligned to what, the, the, um, what you need it to be. And then after that, we compress. So now when you're resizing it, it just depends on what, what size you need it. So, for example, like um, in most cases, when we design websites, we, uh, we have to go make sure that the size of the, what's called the pixel. So every, every sort of um, dot on your computer is a pixel. So basically we, we say that we are designing around 1200 pixels for an average computer size, which would be a, like a, a desktop, not a, um, not a mobile device, which is, uh, which is usually between five, uh, six to 800 pixels, but it all depends on the different type of devices. And obviously we're not always going to be able to figure out which device our customers are coming through because there's so many devices nowadays. So what we need to do is figure out the average size that we need to have for our website. So as an example, let me just, let me just pull up my website so I can talk about it from my website perspective. <clears throat> okay, so when you're seeing this image on the top, this is the, well, the very first image that comes up. Usually it's very big and you know, attractive for most websites. What that image, is, that image is called a hero image. So that, is it, that image is the one that you want to make as big as possible without overdoing it. So uh, in, in general, these are around 1800 pixels. I believe I made mine 2000 pixels uh, and then whatever the height you want it to be. So you make that size first of all, and then after that you do the compression. So that's one example. Then if I go, for example, to a, another page of my website. There I have a different size. So this is still wide, but this is obviously the height is much shorter. So what we want to do is figure out, well, what is the, the what width of our image that needs to be and what is the height that needs to be? So once we figure that out, then we can basically say for my header, it's going to be this size. And for my, for my images, that's going to be below, let's say it's a blog post. And within the blog post, I have some images. It can be obviously smaller. So that could be somewhere around 600 pixels by whatever height you need it. Uh, potentially eight, uh, 800 pixels. It all depends on your specific need, your specific website and how you want it your website to come off. In some cases, you may see a need for having a much bigger image because of various different reasons. So there are different ways to um, approach that as well. So for example, like if you're a um, interior designer or if you're a, um, I don't know, like a, a, I have this a customer a client who's a, who has a window business. So we want to make sure that those images are obviously very, attractive and crisp and, and people can see them 
uh, very uh, very clearly because the, the, those images and uh, images are the ones, the, the, the things that people look at in order to say, oh, okay, is this for me or not, right? So there are different ways to approach that. There is something um, called lazy loading, which is sort of an advanced topic in, in all this image optimization. So lazy loading basically allows us to create, have an image that comes up first and then we can say okay then once let's say someone clicks on that image then i show a bigger picture or i load it up after the website is loaded i then load up a new image and stuff like that there are different ways to sort of approach it technically but the first step is to make sure we resize the image the way we need it and then we compress it the compression tool that i use in most cases is called tinypng.com so it's just a uh, a very simple oops, uh, didn't type the whole thing, tiny PNG. This website is very simple to use. You basically just drop in up to 20 images and it'll compress it uh, for you very quickly. So for example, I'll just drop in um, an example of, a, of an image in here. So, so I put that image in, it's 5.3 megabytes. Oh, the, they have a limitation. So that's uh, five megabytes, how about this one? Yeah, okay. So you'll see that this one is 924 kilobyte. It's compressing, it'll take some time. And it is now 334 kilobyte. That is a huge difference. That's three, uh, uh, three X lower, right? So basically at the lowest, at the simplest, um, uh, excuse me, sorry. Uh, at the simplest situation, what you want to do is make sure that you're resizing your images for the either the header or the images that you need. So it's below, if it's anything on the page, you can pr pretty much assume that it can be below a thousand pixels by whatever height it needs to be. If it's a header between 12, um, if it's a big header, then 1600 is good, 1600 pixels is good. If you want it to be even bigger, 2000 is probably the, the max I would go. 1200 is the lowest that I would go for a header. And so once you get that size resized, then you just put it into tiny PNG, it'll compress it for you very quick, and then you download it and upload it to your website. <clears throat> now that is obviously a manual process and you may not be interested in doing all of that. So there are different tools to, for you to manage on how you kind of, kind of go about doing it. If you're using a WordPress website, then Smush is a really good plugin that you can use. They, they do a lot of that for you, compressing optimization. They, I believe they also do CDN with Smush. I can't remember if they changed it um, recently uh, because that's part of a bigger company and they have a CDN tool as well. If you are interested in making your website even faster in sort of different ways uh, and it's use a CDN for your images, you can use these two tools called Opti Optimal and Short Pixel. They, they offer a certain amount of free, uh, free images that you can to, uh, put up uh, before you have to pay for it. If you're using another CDN, then you don't need to get one of these. You can just use Smosh or do the manual way like I usually do most of the time. And um, you know, that's totally fine. So those are the ways that you can kind of go about doing image optimization. If you are getting into more advanced areas of image optimization, like lazy loading that I mentioned, like this, this is, this is how you say it. So if you want to do that, what you need to do, what the easiest way to do it would be to get a tool that will do it for you. If you are using WordPress and if you're using Elementor within WordPress, they have options to basically enable lazy loading for your images and things like that that is already automatically taken care of for you. Otherwise, there are a lot of other lazy loading plugin tools that you can use without having to do a lot of sort of development and thinking about it. And so that, that, that's sort of the, the, the adva very advanced area of image optimization. There are relation to video optimization as well. If you have a video, uh, in most cases, let's say you have a video on YouTube, what will happen is once you put it on your website, it will Im Im immediately become three to five seconds um, longer to load the website. So there, the lazy loading option for video is a good way for you to approach it. So basically what you're doing is you're making an image come up for your video. And then when someone clicks on it, then they can go look at that video. So for an example, let's take a look at the, the uh, blog pages that I have here. So 
this one, uh, let's see. So this is the latest blog post we had from last week. So let's go in here. All right, so obviously every, every week I record these videos and then I put it on YouTube and then from YouTube, I'll basically link it to my website. So as you'll notice, there's a little button here that says, hey, you can click on this to play it. And so this image is loaded first and this page is loaded up pretty quickly because of that, because I'm not loading the whole video. So when I click on it, it'll come up in this area. Um, this is called a light box. And so once it comes up, it'll kind of start playing the video. And that way you're not loading the entire video, but it's doing that in the background once the image is loaded. Or what, excuse me, the page is loaded. Okay, so hopefully that was clear. Any questions? No. Okay. Mo, can you explain what a CDN is? Of I've course. seen that in Shopify, but I don't know what it is. Of course, yeah. So you also said, I'm interested in learning how to set a video to load after the initial load of the page. Okay, cool. Which you just yeah. mentioned. I, yeah. yeah, okay. So <clears throat> a CDN is basically, well, what it stands for is this content delivery network. And a, a CDN basically allows you to have your, essentially a copy of your website in different parts of the world. So in most cases, your web hosting is located in a specific area. So for example, I use SiteGround, well, I use various different web hosting for different things, but um, so, uh, SiteGround, I believe their hosting is based out of Michigan. So now, if you have a website on SiteGround hosting, your website is actually technically in Michigan. Not technically, it is in Michigan. So what happens from that point is say, let's say that we go to your website, Casey, and say, uh, okay, load up this URL. What happens from that point, because we're in Austin, Texas, from here that it's called a ping, it will go to Michigan, or not really Michigan, it goes closer to you somewhere. And then from there, it says, okay, we found where this website is. It says it's in Michigan. Let's go to Michigan. From Michigan, then it comes back to you. So mm -hmm. now think about how long it takes for you to drive to Michigan, right? Mm -hmm. Now, in the same way, it'll take a while for that to come back to you, that information to come back to you, uh, versus if you have a CDN, mm -hmm. the CDN, what it does is it says that, okay, we'll have a copy of your website in uh, New Mexico, for example, in New York, in California, Texas, whatever. And so from that point on, what happens is you say that, okay, I want to load this website. And so the website starts loading and within the website do their code and different things that uh, the, CD, you would, the CDN essentially sets up. What happens is whatever files and images and whatever you need is then redirected to that closest location to you. And then that closest location sends you that data. So if, you, if it takes you, you know, uh, uh, 200 milliseconds to go to New Mexico and get it that back versus one second to go to uh, Mich Michigan and bring that back is obviously a big difference. So that's right. what a CDN does is basically brings the content, delivers it to closer to you. So once you become a big business, like, uh, like a multinational business and you say, okay, now I have to have, now I have customers in Canada and Europe and whatever you really need to make sure that you have a CDN that will be out in all those places without you having to have your website be duplicated in different areas. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Awesome. All right, any other questions? Hey, well, does Instagram automatically resize them or does it matter? Because sometimes you, you go to a profile and it takes a while to load a page. Is that because of the size of the images? Yeah, so Instagram does all that automatically. In fact, most, most social media companies and big companies already do that. They have uh, different tools in place. It's kind of like the, the tool that I mentioned, um, the Smush and whatever. They have a lot of that in their own systems. So what happens is once you load, upload a, an image to Instagram, it'll basically have a copy of whatever you said and it'll optimize it right there. And then it'll put it up to Instagram.com. And then from there, it'll kind of get uh, synced up everywhere, including a CDN. And so what happens when you load an Instagram page is 
it's all optimized, but depending on how much it's loading and what it's loading and what you're doing and various other things, it could be slow. But that's not necessarily Instagram's, or that's not necessarily because it's, it's not optimized. It could be various other things. And how can we see if a, if a website is doing that on its own? So like I'm setting up a profile on Adobe Portfolio uh -huh. and I'm uploading all these images. How, how can I check if they're doing it or if I have to do it? You know? Well, it, you basically have to see how long it takes to load your image. There are, there are lots of different ways to do it. The fastest and easiest way would be to check this app, uh, not app, the, this website called GT Metrics. So let's say for here, uh, do you have the URL already? Yeah. Okay. Um, so you can either send it to me, I'll put it in here, or uh, I'll just pick something. For example, I'll just choose this because it's in my... Yeah, it's gonna be faster if you just choose something. <laughs> yeah, perfect. So what this does, um, this is a really good tool, I use it all the time, is basically loads up your entire page checks to see what's on that page, gives you that Google page speed score that I mentioned before, and something called y -slow. Basically, those are the ways that Google says, I'm going to rank you in a certain way. So for example, tiny PNG loaded in 6.1 seconds. I always do this over LTE, this test, but obviously not, not everyone's on LTE, like I'm at home, so I have broadband right now. But the reason I do these tests over LTE because I want to make sure that my clients um, and their customers can have as good of experience on mobile first. And then I worry about the, the broadband. Broadband is always gonna be faster, so I don't really worry about that too much. Um, I always make sure that this, this number is somewhere around five seconds or lower. Okay, so once you come in here, then you see, okay, well, what are, uh, what are the, the, the problems in this website? And you'll notice if it's, not an A, then it'll always be on the top. So then the first thing is optimize images. So we can see, okay, so there's something here that we can optimize. So once you look at this one, it's kind of funny because <laughs> that optimization website uh, seems like they need to do some optimization uh, on their images. But, uh, but so, so there's this image that this website automatically tells us that it could be optimized 94%. Okay, so that means that that image is not optimized in the best way possible. There is, there is a caveat though. There are different optimization engines, which is basically a different tool that you can use to see what is optimized or not. And different um, tools have different sort of optimization rate and stuff like that. So in, in this case, basically this website is saying that, okay, this image can be significantly optimized. Now, again, remember that I said that in some cases you may not want to have an optimized version because the, the image degradation uh, is, can be low, but it can, be, it can still be visible. You wanna make sure always that the image that you optimized on tiny PNG or wherever, um, that you wanna compare the original to the, the um, optimized version and make sure that it looks good. If it's good, then you're good to go. Uh, and so, for example, in here, it's saying, okay, there, see the optimized version. So they actually do this optimization for you. So you can see that this is, this is what um, that image looks like. But I think the reason, this is not a, um, this is not a GIF. That's why the other one is a GIF. That, that's why the, this is a little bit of a discrepancy there. So this is basically how you can check. So once you load up a page, you can see what the difference is and how you can do what you can do. If it's something like uh, like a twenty percent optimization uh, redu a reduction or something like that, it's it's probably not that much that much worth it. Unless it's like a whole like you know megabytes or something of savings, then it does make sense. Okay, does that uh, clear up your question, Joanna? Yeah, great, thank you. Cool, you're welcome. Yeah, so the other thing that I mentioned before is the resizing, you know, the other, another word for that is scaled. So you'll notice that this one says, oh, okay, so your images could be scaled down um, to be a certain size if you, if you need it to be. So you'll see that they're making these recommendations. But again, remember that just because this tool is saying that doesn't mean you should do it, it just depends on your clients and what you're doing because this is an automation tool, automated tool. So it doesn't obviously check for a lot of different cases, if, especially if your website is responsive. Okay, any questions?
how do these um, numbers correlate to something like a two to three compression or one to three or, you know, that kind of ratio? Well, the, the, hmm, that's a interesting, I'd never heard of it in terms of ratio before. I've always seen it in terms of percentage or maybe I've just ignored the ratios oh. before. Um, <laughs> but uh, if it's saying two to three, then I imagine it's a 33% uh, uh, up, um, optimization. A reduction rather so okay. so I would see the difference so usually even if it says in a ratio it should probably say something like oh your image was 800 pixels and now it's you know 600 pixels or 500 pixels or something or, or, sorry uh, kilobytes it probably would say that even if it says ratio but uh, either way it doesn't really matter as long as you get a good ratio optimization um, that's fine okay. okay in in most cases just so you guys are aware, um, the images that you're loading, these images, if they're, let's say, two to 300 kilobytes in size, so like what's it once you put it into your, you know, tiny PNG or whatever optimization tool you're using, if it's two to 300 kilobytes, then you're pretty good to, pretty much good to go, unless you have a lot of images mm -hmm. in one what, uh, one page, then you need to be a little careful and okay, maybe I lo lazy load some of these images and you know make sure that not everything is taking for uh, not everything loading up is causing the page to load up in a slow manner. But usually within two to three hundred kilobytes, the images still look good, but it's not um, it's not like overly done. So it's pretty good size. Okay. All good. right. Cool. Any other questions? No? All right, perfect. Now I just have some work to do. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the easiest way to do take care of this is just to get a plugin and uh, like a Smosh or Optimal or whatever uh, and just let it do itself. Uh, if you are using a tool like Wix and Shopify, they, I believe they do a lot of their own image optimization, right, Casey? I just used GT metrics on our site and I didn't really try to do any of these things and we're getting an A for image optimization. Nice. So yeah. I so, suspect it is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's doing a lot of that for you. I believe they also have a CDN built in for, yes. um, for those, those companies. So if you're using any of those platforms, then you're pretty much good to go. We don't have to worry about it. Um, WordPress and if you're building it elsewhere, then you do have to make sure that you're doing this uh, for sure. So that's it. Thank you guys very much. I have questions on what other topics you would be interested in listening about. Do you have any thoughts? Um, probably more on the Google, how to optimize the Google searches and that kind of thing. I'm just beginning, so it would be super begin, you know, or what to look out for, where to go and start learning maybe. That's a great point that you made, Renee. If you go back and look at our chat from uh, two weeks ago, the improving website SEO, that will, okay. that we started that conversation uh, we can definitely get into it further, but it just kind of okay. gets into this rat hole and it's, it's, it's yeah. pretty <laughs> intense. So if you have specific thoughts after watching that and questions, let okay. me know and maybe I can create another topic around it. Okay, perfect. Yeah. yeah, we could even do like a, how do you plan a blog post purely based on SEO? Like, you know, just yeah. kind of go through the steps. I can yeah. do that. Okay, sounds like Casey's signing yeah. up for that. Casey's well, getting ready. Figure out Kelsey first and then let me know what the next opening is after that. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Okay. Anything else, guys? I don't think so. All right. Sounds good. So we will leave it here. Thank you very much for joining today. Remember that next week I am not around, so we're not doing this. But the following week we have sales funnels with Heath. Check, I check. I always have a hard time saying that name, but uh, I'm looking forward to that one. And then afterwards, I believe we'll have Kelsey on to do Great. her uh, chat. So we'll be looking forward to that. 
uh, please remind, uh, remember to invite your, your um, business owner friends that would benefit from this. And I would love to grow this group. Thank you so much for being here and enjoy your weekend and next week. See you the Thanks, following Mo. week. Thank you, Mo. You're welcome.